UFC 305 press conference just ended and it was absolutely botched, to quote Israel Adesanya. Izzy himself ended up crashing out and full out like weeping, rage, voice cracking, crash out on international television and Drickus Duplessis exposed himself as a mason. He was wearing explicit mason symbols and we're going to dive into it all. So what did I think about the UFC 305 press conference? <laughs> I'm glad you asked. Before we get into the actual highlights, like the crying and the statements and everything, I want to talk about the clothing that Drickus Duplessis in particular was wearing. He was marked as a Mason. And what did I tell you? Pretty much all of these guys are. I'm going to have to do an actual deep breakdown into everyone, like Alex Pereira and Drickus. But look at the symbolism, and you guys are going to say, it's not Masonic. It is royal blue and golden yellow square and compass shape. It's meant to look like the square and compass the same symbol as Plinio Cruz's gym, where Alex Pereira trains. The Masonic diamond shape, which is a square and compass. It's exactly what he's wearing on the cuffs of his varsity jacket, and it's also on the collar, okay? And oh, I know, so, oh, some of you guys are going to say, oh, this is like Springbok colors or something like that. These are Masonic colors, Masonic symbols, and the diamond has a, the eye in it, the all-seeing eye. It doesn't get any more explicit than that, except for writing Freemason on your forehead. So let's run through the highlights of the actual press conference from the start here. The first thing I noticed was the massive boo Drick has got. I fight the way I fight. He was getting drowned out from booze when he got his first question and his first couple questions and like responses and follow-ups. The crowd was just drowning him out with really loud booze, real Aussie energy, right? And he seemed pretty flustered by it. He didn't handle it the best. He did try to win the crowd back, but not even in the best way. He tried to make like a rugby joke. Like, dude, they're not booing you because the Springboks won some rugby game. They're booing you because Izzy's like the home crowd favorite. I know he's not from Australia, but he's from New Zealand. He's fought a heck of a lot in Australia. And he's an Oceanian, and they like stick together, those two, go those two countries, right? So he didn't handle it the best. He seemed a bit flustered. And then Izzy got a massive like pop from the crowd. So it is kind of interesting because a lot of people, uh, especially Drickus fans, are a little bit in a maybe a sm sort of echo chamber. So they think that Drickus is like a lot more popular than he is and that people like dislike Izzy a lot more than they actually do outside of certain circles. Izzy's a really big star and he's well known in Australia. So it does make sense for him to be the crowd favorite. And I didn't expect Drickus to be this much of like booed though. It was interesting. I thought it might be a little bit more of a mixed crowd. And then Gamera actually showed Drickus how you should handle the crowd booze. You fight in a different way. Your boy go to sleep. He got booed and just waved them on and proceeded to talk. And then he also proceeded to say he's going to sleep Dan Hooker. And he said the crowd's going to be crying on Sunday. This was a little bit later, but here's basically the Matoish Gamera highlights. Uh, waved on crowd booze. That's what you're supposed to do, not kind of get flustered and deflect with rugby jokes. All right, screw you. You're in enemy territory, right? You're, they've, they've confirmed you're the enemy by booing you. Don't, don't a pander to these bogans, DDP. So Matoish showing DDP a lesson there, a little bit of maturity from old Mr. Matoish. And then Gamrot saying he's going to sleep hooker. Delusional when we all know he's going to get a split decision, a dominant decision, but a split decision nonetheless. 
and uh, going on later to say that the whole crowd's going to be crying Sunday morning. I thought Matoyish really did have the like best moments. Let's talk about the beginning of kind of the beef at the press conference. So a reporter asked Izzy, I believe, about the meme he had posted where he was comparing his willy to Drickus's willy and Drickus kind of crashed out and it looked like he had some prepared lines for that he basically insinuated Izzy's a prudiful which is like eh, miss me with that bro that is so crappy to do nowadays because first of all obviously Izzy didn't search the explicit stuff that Drickus said he would have to search in his google history and stuff and that he's a creep and all this stuff he obviously just searched Drickus Duplessis weight cut and found a convenient picture just happened to be you as a teenager but not even a minor it was a really weird thing I don't like those loser type guys who try to like point pedophile fingers at everyone it devalues the actual people who are being victimized by creeps and Izzy's weirdo but come on we come on that I thought was a crap a little bit of a crash out and also like cringe because it was clearly a prepared line that he had ready to go, and it fell flat. Now, Drickus did have a prepared line a little bit later in that uh, uh, beef where Drick, Izzy was asked something and about winning money on himself, and Izzy's like, when did I become the underdog? And Drickus did land the good dog thing. Like He's like, nobody's talking about dogs, because no one was talking about dogs. That was a great line, great pre-written line, though. He 100% had this stuff like ready to go. You can kind of see that with Drickus. It's not off the cuff. But I mean, hey, a lot of guys can't do off the cuff stuff. And when they do, they end up fumbling like Sean O'Malley or whatever. So uh, Drickus did have that good moment there. But I thought Drickus was losing. Like this was a really close round, if you would call it that, because I thought it was like Izzy was winning because of home field advantage and just verbal cage control in the sense of he was able to deliver his lines more effectively because he wasn't flustered. There was a good question from one of the reporters. We often don't give enough respect to the reporters who actually asked interesting questions that could get a good response. And a reporter asked Kai Kara France, hey, how does it feel to be the one guy on your team who's not getting love in Perth? Obviously, because you're fighting a guy literally from Perth, Steve said, But it was a good question. It's like, how usually you get love, you're getting tons of hate. Like, how does that feel, Kai Kai France? And Kai dealt with it well. Like, what, do you, what is he supposed to say? Like, you, you, you crash out. He was just like, I feel it as love. He's like, it's just good energy. This is what it should be uh, in the sport. So Kai did deal with that well. And everyone knows I'm a Kai hater, but I will give credit where credit is due. And I give credit to that reporter for asking an interesting kind of take. This is where stuff really started to go downhill for Izzy though. Because as I said, I had Izzy slightly up more simply because of the crowd involvement than anything Izzy himself had done during the press conference. Then this Nigerian guy comes out. I think he thought he was giving Izzy a layup. And he said, Izzy, like what about being an African? Basically, he basically insinuated like DDP isn't is an idiot for his statement. And then just asked Izzy, are you bringing the belt back to Africa? And Izzy said, yeah, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to bring it back to Nigeria, then New Zealand. And I'm a citizen of the earth. He gave some like cringe line about that. Like I'm a global citizen, a global child, a child of the earth or something. It was cringe. And then Drickus jumped in on that. Don't go in, are you going to bring your servants back to Africa or something? And everything started to crash out from this. They started to scream at each other. They started to yell at each other. Then Tai Tuavasa had a great little ad lib. This is my land. This is my land. Based Abo nationalist. Sorry, I shouldn't. Aboriginal nationalist. Whatever. Shout out all my Abos from Western Sydney. All right. Stand up on my Western Sydney Abos because I think Ty is a Chad for that one. It was probably the best one liner at the press conference. I really like that. Uh, not too political, but just standing up for uh, his people. Right. Shout out all my Western Sydney Eshes. Shut up, pink fit. So Izzy said what seems to have been a slur. He said, called Drickus a pink suit or pink fit. He said, like, you're a pink fit guy. I think, like, about the skin. So racially motivated, 100%, honestly, crash out. And that was the beginning of the crash out. I don't know if Izzy was crying at this point or he started to cry, like, after this or whatever. It was a bit chaotic. But then they go to a close-up on Izzy. He's full out bawling. Like, people in my chat were going, Izzy's crying, I think. Izzy's crying. I'm like, Izzy? Or is he just, like, yelling and voice cracking? Is he kind of whipping himself up, up to get emotional? No. He got full-blown emotional. That he's not acting. He wasn't playing up to the crowd. 
he might be on some estrogenic cycle or something. He's got me some estrogenic imbalance. I'd love to hear Derek from More Plates, More Dates give his take on what he thinks about Izzy Crash Out because it wasn't like the single line out the servants triggered Izzy. Izzy started ranting, ranting, and he wasn't even that like upset, right? He was calm. He wouldn't raise his voice. Then he started to raise his voice, yelling about his country. And then his voice cracked and he was talking about how he used to clean with his mom and he was going on all these rants. And I think he looked at his parents in the crowd and he kind of, maybe he at first was trying to work himself up to play to the crowd and be like, I have to get like angry about this because that's like my character. But then he really did. And I don't know. Anyone who's done cycles or something, let me know because it really seemed like not like Izzy's emotional, but it did seem out of character. It seemed crazy. He might be like the first guy to openly ball and weep at a press conference and Drake's fans are saying like oh it, oh no Sean Strickland Sean Strickland crying at the press conference and Drake 100% made Sean cry though that's the thing like Drake said one line and it immediately triggered Sean changed his entire uh, attitude and he just went off but with Izzy it was like he almost changed his own attitude and worked himself up into this like emotional crash out state so Drickus did trigger that. He was the catalyst, obviously. But I thought Drickus also did look somewhat emotional. Drickus was exposing that he really actually does have animosity towards Izzy and doesn't like him. And that there's underlying tension between them that goes beyond just rivalry. It does seem like there is some cultural, some maybe some racial stuff between both guys. Both guys do not like each other. It is clear. And there is a lot of emotion there. Uh, Drickus clearly won the press conference, though. You cannot crash out and openly weep on international television and win a press conference. Like, I saw some Izzy fans saying, like, he did some, he did really well and stuff like that. It's like, not really. The crowd was carrying his moments. You feel me? They were making him the winner by flustering DDP. And it's like, DDP was just, didn't expect that reaction from the crowd really at the end of the day so yeah he was winning and ddp did crash out i didn't like ddp's statements about the internet search stuff i thought that was completely out of pocket and just a disservice in general but izzy openly wept on international television so my main takeaways from this press conference are both DDP and Izzy are crash outs because DDP is going to be a little bit more careful with what he says. Like that's just, it screams like weird 4chan incel crap with the whole baseless pedophile allegation stuff. I hate that crap. It's like the same as the me too. Oh, you're, you assaulted me. Like that chick who's uh, accusing Pereira. It's like, you're just accusing this guy of being an internet creep when you have nothing to back that up. So it's really weird. And then D Izzy is an emotional wreck, literally crash out. Can you take much away from that for the fight though when it does seem like it was a random mood swing that could have been influenced maybe by some PEDs? I would lean away from that at the moment. I would caution anyone from getting overly confident in DDP because of this press conference. Let's wait. Let's see their face-offs at the ceremonials. Let's see how Izzy does in these next embedded clips and stuff and see if it really is affecting him or see if his team can calm him down. Uh, you don't want him going in there emotional though. Like fighting too, too emotional like that where you're openly crashing out and crying. Yeah, it would go in DDP's favor. So at the end of the day, DDP won this, but they are both not looking the best they're both kind of cringe at the end of the day they like to yap and uh the highlights here were Matoj Gamra absolute Chad Jorzino Rosenstrike absolute gentleman tied to Avasa great one-liner aboriginal nationalist you got to respect that and then uh Steve or second Kaikar France both boring. I'm sick of people saying Steve or Oramogs anyone he can't even Oramog a literal mouse over a piece of cheese. he Stuart Little has more aura than Steve Ersek. And I think Steve Ersek is going to beat the crap out of Kaikara France. But he's got Ryan Hall aura. Where am I? I'm on a stage. Oi. I'm just I'm just Steve Ersek. All right, he didn't have aura. They both, Kaikara France and Steve Ersek. All right. And uh, besides that, it was a decent press conference though, guys. I will be live probably for the weigh-ins today if you're watching this. Friday morning, if you're on the uh, West Coast here, or Western Hemisphere here, and uh, maybe for the ceremonials at 11 p.m. Eastern time tonight, but definitely for the 6 p.m. weigh-in show, I will try to be live. And then I'll be live at 6.30 p.m. Saturday 
Eastern Standard Time for the 305 card. So hop into my stream if you want to join me for that and drop a like on the video if you enjoyed it. Let me know what your takeaways and impressions of the press conference were. Subscribe if you're new and turn the bell notification on so you don't miss a single video. So the Pharisees are on me, they're behind me, they're throwing stones at me right now. We gotta dip, we gotta get out of here right now. Demon possessed man on my right, I'm praying over him right now. He's cracked, he's cracked. I'd like to give a big thank you to all my channel members and a special thanks to my Lion Tier members. I appreciate each and every one of you guys. And without all of you, the channel would not be possible. Demon Bobby. Demon Mommy.